Good evening. Um, after my first 35 years of life as a frog, <laughs> I stopped asking my friends and colleagues what was wrong with me. I tried to make friends, I tried to live all together in peace, but they still think or talked that I was too different. Uh, then, well, I started to work with biodiversity to try to understand why difference is important or it is not important. I studied biology, I uh, started to discover the amazing world of life in Colombia, my country, my home country, which has one of the largest uh, varieties of living beings in the world. There are some numbers over there that we have reached with the help of tons of scientists and people, and that now are on the care of Instituto Humboldt, which is the institution I work with. And I feel quite proud that diversity is really appreciated, like here, where we are talking about uh, different aspects of how diverse diversity is good for the planet. So there's no doubt that biological diversity is something important, that we are discovering and we are uh, appreciating it, but still we are not being able to stop biodiversity destruction. So I had to look again to the frogs and ask, what are we doing wrong? Why are not be, we being able to stop the destruction of a diverse world if it is supposed to be okay? It's good to be diverse. Perhaps something lies on the culture. We have, we have failed to build a cultural view of biodiversity. Uh, then, we ask, or we went to ask, and I went to ask uh, colleagues from the indigenous groups, not just in Colombia, such as those, but worldwide, and many of my colleagues and friends are also asking them how they understand biodiversity, how they understand the living variety of the world. And they say, well, it's the, what we, we are. There's no difference between the world and ourselves. There's no separation. But then you get uh, really lots of troubles with science, because science do not understand the natural world as being our own. Science keeps looking at nature as something separated, that's something that could be understood, described, uh, admired, used, and even represented in communication devices represented by arts, but doesn't help too much to build a sense of what uh, is biodiversity. Um, we think on science uh, as the way we innovate, we create diversity by science, but also we discover diversity by, by, by science. Then again, I ask myself, how is that science is not being able to really uh, uncover the importance of uh, biodiversity. But of course, science is just one way of looking at the world. It's one way of knowing the world, approaching the world. It's one way of building knowledge, and it is not the way that all knowledge is built. Uh, in fact, science is quite important for certain part of the society, but when we took a pill just to cure uh, a cold, we really, at the end, we don't know what, uh, how it's affecting our bodies. We have plenty of faith on universities and doctors and our scientific capacity. Uh, we need uh, to really understand how this process of building knowledge is really providing us with well-being. There's a um, question about how science is really putting biodiversity forefront for us to keep living in this world. Uh, how are we gonna 
relate again with this biodiversity to provide uh, food, shelter, and water to the whole world. So, well, the frog keeps asking questions. Uh, should we protect all that biodiversity in a big planetary uh, park, uh, a big reserve of biodiversity? Should we protect just the Amazon, which is so important, and then all of us migrate to Dutchland? Or can we stay all and living together with the other animals and plants? Um, and then you see here how culture has modified the whole landscape, how Europe has less than 2% of its original ecosystems. And then you compare with Latin America, and you see that we still have 60 or 70% of wild ecosystems. So there's some asymmetries here that also must be linked to the way we see and use and approach the living world. How do we build culture at the landscape level? How do we build culture in the food plate? And scientists come out with beautiful graphs that nobody understands. <laughs> so, okay, there's nice, colorful, there's models, scenarios, there's lots of statistics behind, uh, and then you saw that to the policymakers and try to convince that biodiversity is quite important. And they look at them and say, oh, yes, yes, oh, of course, yeah, we have to help. <laughs> so, <coughs> the idea is to create a new dialogue between the way we build culture from biodiversity and culture as the way we handle science. Science is a product of culture. Science has to be understood as the way we deal with knowledge and the way we approach the unknown, which is a huge amount of the reality. Therefore, my effort and the, the, of the Humboldt Institute and a big team of people is to try to build new types of relations with culture and uh, try to um, be understood as a different uh, way to approach knowledge. Uh, and of course, when I saw my colleagues dancing, I always think on that. This is knowledge and, sense and sensibility that's, that has to flow, to, to create something that is quite new. It's not to put one at the service of, of the other. It's not using arts for fulfilling uh, a purpose. It's not using science to inspire arts. It's that really we are uh, one mindset, that we are just unified as nature and culture. Diversities are the result of change. And while we change as humans, the world is changing. So we lose perspective all the time and we have to regain our position in the world by uh, looking at ourselves and looking at, our, uh, at the members of the society and members of the uh, wild world, to say animals and plants as well. So we have to sing together with the rest of the, we'd say, creation, with the rest of the living world. Um, we need to survive to the future. We know that changes that we are producing in the world are huge. Uh, some are worse than others. We are trying to face them all in different ways. Um, but the only way to really um, convey solutions and to find a new path for that is a dialogue. It's, it's talking. We are not um, convincing the government with nice graphs. We are not convincing society with just social protest. We are not convincing academy with scientific papers. We have to use all of our resources to really create a new dialogue, a new approach for living in the world. And that's also true because there's plenty of global commons 
we need, we cannot avoid creating a view of the world as a common ground. Sometimes we have a forest and it's ours, but in general terms, the genetic integrity of the world is a common for all of us. So diversity needs to be properly communicated. We need to inquire those frogs. What do you think about yourselves? What do you think about your own position in the world? What do you think of me? And let's try to convey a view of the world where we don't fight each other. There's a basic need to survive, so let's talk. There's plenty of examples worldwide nowadays about how to produce pieces of communication, how to build uh, museums, how to uh, bring um, graphics and uh, new technologies into science and mixing science and art. But that's not enough. That's not enough because that's more or less some of the, what we have been doing during our history. We need to really, really go deep on our understanding of humans as part of the world, as part of the, uh, also as part of the wild side of the world. Therefore, I'm inviting to get a bit of queerness. Let's... Thank you very much.